mushrooms. You can find them in the forest. You can find them in your backyard. You can even find them on pizza. But mushrooms are a lot more than just a pizza topping. First of all, they are uh, a fungus. They are neither a plant nor an animal, although some people think that they're some sort of plant or vegetable. There, there are neither plants nor animals. Mushrooms are fungi, although they are neither plants nor animals. In fact, fungi are more closely related to animals than they are to plants. But what is the life cycle of a mushroom? Well, it's pretty different than anything else. Mushrooms start out as as tiny seed-like structures called spores. Spores are microscopic, way too small to see with the naked eye, but under a microscope, they look like tiny grains or seeds. These spores come out of a mushroom and blow in the wind. Once a spore lands in a suitable location, it becomes mycelium. Mycelium is a network of threads that goes through the soil. Mycelium is usually white, and it can sometimes be yellow. This mycelium is black. Some mycelium is a decomposer. It breaks down dead wood and and leaves. Some mycelium is mycorrhizal. It forms a symbiotic relationship with trees. And some mycelium is parasitic, which means that it steals nutrients from living trees. Once it is ready to reproduce, the mycelium produces a mushroom, which is the, the reproductive structure of the fungus. The mushroom is above ground, and it spreads the spores. The spores usually come out of the underside of the mushroom. This mushroom is an elfin saddle. Elfin saddle mushrooms can be brown, or black, or white. The elfin saddle mushroom is not edible, but they do look similar to edible morel mushrooms. But they also look a bit different. They have a different shape, but their cap is, but they're both wrinkly on the top. Also, elfin saddle mushrooms release their spores from the top of the cap. This is a coral mushroom. The coral mushroom is a really cool mushroom. It's also really beautiful. Look at the look at how it branches out. It's so unique compared to other mushrooms. It's also pretty big. There are many different types of coral mushrooms. Some of them are yellow, some are white, some are pink, some coral mushrooms are even purple. This mushroom is a russula. Russula mushrooms are also called brittle gill mushrooms because their gills are, well, the lines on the bottom of the cap are brittle. And their stem is also brittle and and breaks apart like chalk. This wrestler mushroom is being eaten by a slug. This mushroom is a cat's tongue mushroom. It is called the cat's tongue because on the bottom of its cap it has kind of a rough texture, similar to a cat's tongue. However, this mushroom is also pretty squishy and kind of gelatinous. I don't know what this mushroom is, but I'm pretty sure that it is the leafy brain mushroom. The leafy brain mushroom has a very unique life cycle. Like most mushrooms, it starts out as a spore. Then the spore becomes yeast, and then the yeast has to find another yeast. Cell in order to grow into mycelium. Then the leafy brain mushroom mycelium attacks and parasitizes the mycelium of a different kind of mushroom that grows on wood called the false turkey tail.
There's actually false turkey tail growing on this log. Look at the right side of the screen. Do you see that orange thing? It's a false turkey tail mushroom, which is the host of the parasitic leafy brain mushroom. This is a Mycena mushroom, also known as a bonnet mushroom. Mycenas are a very common little brown mushroom that's sometimes brown, but it's also sometimes white. And they have little lines on their cap going from the top to the edge of the cap. And Mycena mushrooms are pretty common. Some mushrooms have very unique ways of spreading their spores around. This is the bird's nest fungus. In each of these little nest-like things, there are little, like, eggs. They look kind of like eggs, and they're filled with spores. And the bird's nest fungus starts out as this little ball and then opens up to reveal the eggs. And then when it rains, these little eggs, which are filled with spores, splash out of the bird's nest fungus and stick to the wood that the bird's nest fungus is growing on. And then it grows into mycelium, and then the, and the mycelium produces more bird's nest fungus, which makes more of those little eggs that contain spores, which can grow into more bird's nest mushrooms. Other mushrooms have different ways of spreading spores. This is a puffball, and the spores come out of the hole in the top of the puffball. When young, a puffball is firm and white inside. At this stage, the puffball is considered edible, and it doesn't have spores yet. But then, once the puffball gets old, it dries out and spores form inside of it. At this stage, the puffball is no longer edible. But if something touches or bumps the puffball, the spores come out. And sometimes species of puffball can have up to 7 trillion spores in the mushroom. And then each, and each of these spores might grow into a new puffball mushroom. Over here, it looks like somebody was eating oranges and not cleaning up the peels. But actually, these are not orange peels. This is an orange peel mushroom. The orange peel mushroom is a type of mushroom that's related to morels and elfin saddles, and it actually launches the spores from the top of the mushroom. The spores are in little sacks that shoot the spores as, so that they can grow into more orange peel mushrooms. And these sacks are microscopic, but they do cover the top of the orange peel mushroom. Some mushrooms are edible and delicious. One kind of edible mushroom is the chanterelle. Chanterelles are very tasty mushrooms. Chanterelles can be yellow or white. The most common variety of chanterelle is yellow. One defining feature of the chanterelle is that they lack true gills. They have false gills. True gills are the lines on the underside of a mushroom's cap, and they look like plates or blades. Chanterelles have false gills, which look more like folds or wrinkles. These are chanterelle false gills. Chanterelles are also white inside, and they smell fruity, and they pull apart like string cheese. And they taste delicious. In my opinion, chanterelles are some of the best mushrooms. This is a hedgehog mushroom. Hedgehog mushrooms are another delicious edible mushroom. They also grow on the ground under conifer trees. And they are also really good. Their key identifying feature is the spines on the underside of the cap. Hedgehog mushrooms don't have gills or pores or false gills. They have spines. Not all mushrooms are edible. Some mushrooms are poisonous. 
And this is why you should be very careful when mushroom hunting. Poisonous mushrooms are not usually dangerous to touch, but they are dangerous to eat. Some of them can make you sick. Some can even kill you. This mushroom is a false morel. It is poisonous because it contains the same stuff that's in rocket fuel. Then it's no surprise that this mushroom is toxic. This is a panther amanita mushroom. It can cause hallucinations and convulsions. It can also cause seizures. It can even be deadly. It has a brown cap with white spots, white gills, and a bulb at the base, as well as a ring around the stem. This mushroom looks like it could be a lepiota mushroom. Some lepiotas are very, very poisonous, and some could even cause liver failure. And lepiotas have white gills, and they're oftentimes scaly, and this looks like it could be a lepiota. Food is not the only use of mushrooms, and with other uses for mushrooms, you don't have to worry about poisonous, look, about poisonous mushrooms. This is an artist's conch mushroom, and it is very, very big. And it's called the artist's conch because the bottom of the mushroom, which is white, actually bruises brown like this. It turns brown when bruised, and because of this, you could draw on an artist's conch mushroom. And this mushroom is a dyer's polypore. The dyer's polypore is a very unique mushroom because of how it is used. Through a specific way of cooking the dyer's polypore and mixing it with certain chemicals, you can actually use the dyer's polypore to dye yarn green, yellow, or orange. And this is an earth star mushroom, and the earth star mushroom is a really beautiful mushroom, and so probably if you were to dry it, it could be used as a decoration. Mushrooms are amazing. They have been here for a lot longer than we have been here, and they are neither plants nor animals. In fact, mushrooms are more closely related to animals than they are to plants. If you want to learn more about the fascinating world of fungi, you should subscribe to my channel for more Nature Kid videos. Bye!